So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look in detail at that lead shoulder. And we're gonna be showing you the three movements you need to get correct in order to play your best golf. So thank you for joining me once again at my home. Uh, we're currently in lockdown, but hopefully coming towards the end of the lockdown, the golf courses in the UK, some of the golf courses actually open today. Um, the golf course where I'm attached isn't quite open yet, but they're hopefully taking some measures to do just that. So in the next few weeks, we should be able to get back on the golf course and get some slightly better surroundings than we have at the moment. So we're talking about the lead shoulder. We're gonna talk about how it moves in the backswing, how it moves in transition, and what it should be doing through impact. And this can really help you play some really, really good golf and definitely help you with some of the ball striking issues that you might well be experiencing at the moment. So the lesson plan today is to focus on those three movements, the backswing, the transition, and the downswing, and just talk about what the lead shoulder should be doing, how that kind of relates to the body and the club and the arms, uh, and hopefully try and give you some clear ideas about what to focus on if you feel like each of these areas is something you need to work on. And we're gonna try and give you some pretty key simple words that will help us appreciate what that lead shoulder is doing. So we're gonna use, for the backswing, we're gonna be using down and back, in the transition, we're gonna be using forward and down. And then for the impact, we're gonna be using up and in. And those are our words, our key words that we're gonna be focusing on to help us um, really get a better idea of what that lead shoulder should be doing. And we're gonna kind of cover some of the errors that you might be experiencing when you're playing golf. So we're gonna first of all talk about what that lead shoulder should be doing in the backswing. So the backswing is pretty important. We've got to organize the body. We've got to get the club into a decent position and the lead shoulder can play a part in that. And so let's quickly go through what that lead shoulder should be doing. Well, it should be going down and back. And let's explain what we mean by that. If I was to highlight my lead shoulder at the setup, as I make my backswing, it goes in two directions. It goes down towards the ground and it goes back away from the target. Now, what that does, if that lead shoulder moves correctly, it kind of helps me with my rotation and my pivot. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna focus very much on what it does to the angle of my shoulders and how that's really important. Notice from that down the line camera that when that lead shoulder makes that correct movement, I'm able to rotate with some good angle in my shoulders. And this unfortunately is the first maybe place that we see golfers tending to struggle. If we were to look at a trend between the amateur golfers that I see, the recreational golfers and the elite golfers, we would tend to see the elite golfers will be turning their shoulders on more of an angle. The handicapped golfers who struggle tend to turn their shoulders on an angle which is too flat. So that lead shoulder hasn't moved enough down in the backswing. So watch what happens from that face on when I make my rotation, but the lead shoulder doesn't really move down. It creates this very, very level shoulder angle, which makes it very, very difficult for me to rotate well. It makes it difficult for me to get my arms into the correct position. And then from here, we're gonna to have to make some very, very strange movements in that transition to get that club into a pretty functional delivery position. So let's go through again what that correct movement should be. Notice how the grip of the club, I'm referencing that as my lead shoulder. And as I make my backswing, it's going down to the ground and back away from the target. That's really important. Now, if I do that, successfully, if I had a few reference points on my sort of tailbone and top on the front of my head, I should be able to maintain my contact points with those references. If I make my movement and my shoulder doesn't move down enough, we often see we break away from those contact points during that backswing. And I say, this is pretty common that we see this from um, you know, the golfers who struggle with structure at the top of the golf swing and, and struggle with some of the things down at impact. So the two words that you need to be aware of and focus on for the backswing is that lead shoulder needs to move down and back. And if we can get that moving correctly, we should be able to get the shoulders on a good angle. And that's really, really important for the transition. And then as we start down, which is what we're gonna cover next. So the transition, going from backswing to downswing and what that lead shoulder does. Now, if we had to pick one of these three, this would be the one that I think golfers get wrong the most. Number one, they tend to move the shoulder incorrectly, but number two, their concept is often incorrect and what they're trying to do is wrong. So if they're trying to do something wrong, there's a very good chance they're gonna do that wrong. So the two words that we're gonna use here is down and forwards. So down is again, down towards the ground and forwards is obviously towards the target. Now, if I, I'm gonna exaggerate this slightly, but let's make my backswing move and let's make that good rotation. That lead shoulder and transition, so bearing in mind this is the point where the golf swing goes from backswing to downswing. We're not talking about the whole of the downswing here. In transition, we would like that lead shoulder to be going down and forwards. And you can hopefully see that movement there. 
Now, as I say, this isn't the whole down swing, so we're not saying that shoulder needs to do that all the way down until impact, but in that transitional phase, when we're starting to change direction, we're trying to load the golf club with energy, we're trying to get the arms to get squeezed into the chest, we're trying to create some torque through the body. That lead shoulder wants to be moving towards the ground and towards the target slightly before it starts to move in any other direction. Now, what we should see that encourages is it encourages a good pressure shift. So we start to see the golfer shift that weight and that pressure into that lead side. That's really important. And from the down the line angle, we tend to see that golfer being able to better sort of compress their body and get this very nice settled or squatted sort of positional feel that we know that the best players do. If you feel like you need to work on that a little bit more, there's a video here which will help that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the hips and how they play a huge role in that. So as you transition, the lead shoulder needs to move forwards and down very, very slightly. That's a great movement to help you get that pressure into that lead side. So the second movement is in transition and the key words there are forward and down. So we're getting pretty close to impact now. We're about to deliver the club to the ball. What should that lead shoulder be doing? Well, the two words here would be up and in. Up being obviously this direction, in being sort of left of target because it's working inwards from the ball. Again, we're gonna use the golf club to help us reference this. So as I get towards my impact position, that lead shoulder will be moving upwards and inwards. So it's moving on this angle this way. So hopefully you can see the grip end of the club there is a pretty decent visual to help us see that. What does this do? Well, the up and in really is, is controlling how much we turn our body, because if we rotate, that's the inward part. And what that does is it helps us deliver the golf club with a handle forwards. If we're continuing to turn the torso and the shoulders, it generally helps us keep some structure in the arms. And it helps us actually what we call exit left, which the best players tend to do. They often have the hands moving around to the left due to what that lead shoulder is doing. Again, sometimes this is conceptually what golfers do wrong but sometimes we see a golfer trying to swing to the right or we see a golfer trying to swing the club head towards the target now the more the lead shoulder moves up and in the more the golf club is going to want to follow and move up and in so if you're a golfer who's trying to swing the club head to the right of the target there's a very very good chance that your lead shoulder isn't doing the right thing it's potentially stalling in this position meaning that you're going to be wanting to try and swing the club out to the right but as you can see when that lead shoulder doesn't work correctly, we get a lot of overtaking of that right hand. We don't tend to be able to control the face as well as we'd like. And we don't generally tend to be able to get the consistency and impact that, that we really desire from our game. So the key movement through impact would be the lead shoulder is moving up and in. It's moving up and around and it's a fantastic feeling. And even just a little drill like that is a fantastic way for you to really sense how the body should be moving through impact. And, and I really like this as a little drill. I do this with a lot of golfers, just little presets here, and then really focusing up that lead shoulder and it's travel up and in. It's a fantastic way, as I say, to hit some really nice little low shots, control the strike, and keep some really nice positive structure to your kind of post impact position. So if we can use those words in practice, in the back swing, the lead shoulder moves down and back. In transition, it moves forwards and down, and then through impact, it moves up and in. That's going to help you achieve some really nice looks to your goal swing. It's gonna control some really important movements which kind of have to be there. And ultimately, it's gonna help you hopefully hit some better golf shots during practice and out on the golf course. And obviously, that's what these videos are designed to do, it helps you play better golf. Now, by controlling that shoulder, we're actually controlling lots of things in the golf swing. And, and my job as a coach is to um, you know, put things across in different ways. And, and, and this might be a different way that you've heard this described. It might be a different thought process for, for you, but very often in, in golf instruction, you can hear something a hundred times. And the hundred and first time you hear it, it makes a bit more sense or it's presented in a different way and it clicks and it's like that eureka moment, that light bulb moment. Um, and so what we're really looking at here is we're looking at the body pivot in that backswing. We're looking at how we transition, how we shift pressure. And then we're looking at how we structure our impact and our follow through. And to achieve all those things, we're really just focusing on that lead shoulder and how that works. So hopefully those drills or those ideas, and those concepts help. Might be giving you something different to practice. Really hope if you do practice these things, it's successful. Love to know what you think in the comments box down below. Drop me a note. Let me know how you're getting on. And hopefully we'll see you back here again for a future video. Thanks for watching.